the sauce. Siegfried coming up to bat to face off against Fairy. Who players we got going on here, Jay? We got Hippolas versus Icebound. So Icebound, I know from a decent amount of other games, right? You know, I think they play a lot of the French bread titles as well. Of course, I saw them in Strive, but pulling up some Grand Blue today. And Hippolas, you know, pulling up with a Fairy. One of these characters that I think, especially when Rising dropped, a lot of people didn't believe in the strength of, said, oh man, there's 6 6 L to make your way in on her. A lot of the ultimate skills, you know, seeming a little lackluster from Fairy, but we've been seeing more and more representation, I think, as the weeks go on. So I'm excited to see it heading into game number one. Yeah, and honestly, letting the intros rock on top of that, oh, yeah. too. Big fan of that to start off the broadcast. So let's dive right in. So something that happens a lot with Fairy, especially from like Vanilla Grand Blue, is yeah. the, she wants to play the mid-range game. She wants to play the long-range game and just try to keep the opponent at bay. Against the likes of Siegfried, it's a little tough. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you build up that 50 meter, use the ultimate skill for the hit grab, pushing you all the way over to the corner. Now Icebound really just gets to run this game plan, right? Now you don't have to use the fireball to get in, but Hippo last finds the way back out with the whip. Yeah, you saw uh, Hippo trying to get something started up there with the crouching lights. Thought that Icebound was going to try something, went for the reversal to counter it out. Unfortunately, getting a big punish on that little catch out. Hippo got a little aggressive. Yeah, you know, trying to make your way on out of the corner. The low profile on the 2M, avoiding it is definitely a heartbreaker as far as Hippolas is concerned, right? But still, trying to go a little bit more on the aggressive now, right? Normally we're thinking, oh, Fairy, you know, Indiana Jones out with the whip, you know, backdash, everything, try and take that space. But instead, we're running up, even using a little bit of 6XL of our own and run up with a throw bait on dive kick. No full confirm, but it at least keeps Icebound on their toes. Dude, Fairy's wake-up game, Oki game, is so good. You just get right on top of them, you knock them down, you have so many options at, at your disposal when she's up close and personal, especially like jump light or like that jump dive kick that uh, Hippo just uh, demonstrated. It's mm -hmm. such good options to just try to like, you know, catch your opponent, you know, sleep at the wheel. And now Icebind kind of struggling to close that distance until we finally see an old projectile coming. Yeah, this, uh, you know, those two interactions from Hippolas, right? Every time we're trying to go for the ultimate whip to projectile invo through the fireball, even with the slowdown, it keeps approaching just enough to catch out that startup, but enough to catch out the start of the 6-6-L. Nothing found here, and now it's tied up one apiece on the rounds. Yeah, and that's something that Siegfried definitely gets a lot of mileage out of, is that 6-6-L. That dashing light is so strong. It's that kick right there, because right afterwards, it's going to be plus as heck, so you can easily get a punish right afterwards if you try to challenge. That's exactly what's happening to Hippo right now, stuck in the corner against Icebound. Can't seem to get out until we finally get a backwards grab. Now we're turning the tables on you. Big punish coming out. Nope, not going to go for it just yet. It's not that, that minus. You're just going to be able to take your turn instead. Ooh, there we go. On the GG setup, that was an interesting use to try and reversal out there. You know, Icebound had the GG right uh, right on top of him, so Hippolas really didn't need to push the pressure, right? Reversal safe. And now 50% HP for both of them trying to swing through, but the ultimate firewall once again. No confirm. Throwing out the mediums more and more. Playing this long range game. Icebound trying to, like, preemptive a swing, right? Because yeah. whenever Fairy throws out a normal, like, her whip is an active hurt box. Like, you can get hurt exactly. by that. Okay, throwing yeah, out to like you're saying, trying to be a little preemptive here. No, instead using it for the ultimate flame wall once again. 2 BP on the side of Icebound. This is scary for Hippolas. No way to get out of this pressure. Ooh. Dude, Icebound just played it patient there at the end. That's the second time we saw Hippo trying to like throw out a, you know, an old DP reversal just to like get Icebound, release some of that pressure. And Icebound just played it patient. Didn't throw out a normal, waited for the prime opportunity, got a punish, takes away game one. Into this next game. Oh my god, speaking of DPs that do not find their mark, the MDP coming out from Icebound now down to 50% HP. That's pretty rough. Getting a lot of normals, but not too many conversions. Good clash, and they turn that into a back throw. Gets called out by the crouching light, puts you into the corner. We got full meter on both sides here. See if we're gonna be able to spend it. We're gonna get the evolution. Oh no, you are ready! Oh, that's gonna be a reset, and that is gonna be dead. Are you serious? You're done. Good night. Nah, bro, reset into the unblockable. So normally, we're used to seeing like two close L's or maybe three to set that up, right? And that's a pretty telegraphed way of setting up the unblockable. But you know, Icebound trying to keep the visual stimulus a little unique here gets caught out. And look at how much damage we got off of it, too. Now it's set point for Icebound. I think it's very common for players to, uh, when they're in the middle of getting hit, they kind of like are resetting their minds. They're like, hey, here's the combo. I'm, gonna, I'm preparing for when it's over. And then sometimes you don't expect that reset to come out. 
my god, didn't expect the whip to come out there. The hula hoop brings Icebound back out to full screen, tries to approach and gets caught out once again. See, now we're thinking, oh, okay, I could use 50% for the ultimate whip, but it literally has a 0% success rate against that flame wall. I'm just going to dodge right through, put Icebound back in the corner, and now an off of the whip, one touch. Icebound's defense has been really on point, just holding all these blocks on the GG, refusing to give Hippo the uh, dashing heavy, which is like that big overhead, but we're just chipping yeah. away at that help. Icebound eventually needs to make a move and is not going to be able to find that opportunity. Hippo denying that and bringing it to a round three. Yeah, still set point for Icebound, but I like the patience coming out from Hippo last, right? You know, a little bit more traditional on the zoner spacing like we've been seeing. Towards the round start when you have a lot of HP and it's pretty even, playing a little bit more aggressive, right? Even pulling up with the 6-6L dodges through that 2M, but still fighting for your life. When you're at that low HP, you can afford to play it a little bit more slow. Caught up in the corner now, though. Yeah, he was spending the ult to get you into that corner. Hippo doesn't want to be in there whatsoever. Brave counter to put you right Ooh. back in. Another reversal, not that big of a punch. That could have been significantly more damage. Icebound, they're both just spending brave counters left and right, spending all of their diamonds, the resources, catches the punish, close light, converting into some damage. Yeah, there we go. Ultimate Hula Hoop gets you the hard knockdown, but runs up, tries to bait out a DP, but Icebound one layer ahead for the back throw, dodge on the Raging Strike. People say, no, 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 I'm not going down like that. Another hard knockdown into GG. For some reason, you just don't see it that no! often. When you finally see it, the spot dash comes out. Had a jumping light, can't finish it off. Icebound is bleeding. Just gonna send it. We fell into the pressure. It was just like, I want this round to be over one way or another. Send the Skybound art. Send Blackfang. And now we're tied up. One apiece on the sets. The final game here. Oh, see, this is our first set, and we are already off to quite the heart racer going on right now. I like that we're seeing a lot more roll, a lot more spot dodge from Hippolas, where before they were trying to, you know, out contest with a lot of these normals and the ultimate versions of the specials that really weren't getting too much. But we are getting a good amount in that match arena. The $10 donation from Lucas. Thank you so much. A big fan of Lucas bringing the 10 donos for these players, putting on such a good set for us. Like he said, this is the first round of pools on broadcast. We already got ourselves a uh, round three, a game three. I love game threes in pools, dog. Exactly, already so close, but too close for comfort here. Off of the Sword of Death, he really just takes the way in with the air stall. Yeah, we're gonna spend the 100 for it because we might as well, we get that BP back. Oh my gosh, so much damage coming out from the Black Fang, doing so half of your health. Hippo now stuck in block string pressure. Try to mash out. I think Hippo was expecting like a command grab, so we wanted to like challenge it out, but it was the other follow up from it. I think that was the medium follow up. Yeah, I went for the frame trap instead. I think we we caught out the jump start up from Hippo last right? I think like you're saying, scared of the grab. Either way, you're at such low health. Both of them might have been able to kill, but now Icebound once again back on set point 66M puts you right up against the corner. And again, the frame trap keeping Hippo last locked down. Yeah, really good option to be able to get in there. There's going to be that roll to get right through the far medium coming out from Fairy Hippo. Finding some answers here, waiting for the jump, just catching the toes. Again, you're noticing that Hippo's landing a lot of these clean hits, but just not really converting it too much. Ooh, that's the first UDP that's actually worked, right? There we go. We cross on through. Not going to open you up, but at least it brings you back to the mid screen. Dodge right through. Hippolas finds another hard knockdown. I love that answer. So many players would just block that right through that hippo. Just going with the brave counter one more time to send you right back into the prime position again. This is Fairy's prime opportunity to be at Ooh. the mid range. You have no more health left. Icebound sending GG. What's going to be the mix up? We're walking solely, waiting for him to commit to something. Probably was afraid of the DP. Brave counters to put you into chip kill. Dies Ooh. to GG. EX variety. Oh my god. And you have the 50 meter, you're all the way across the screen. That is a checkmate situation, right? GG meets you with the projectile on wake up. Even if you dodge through, it catches you out in the recovery frames. And now we're final game. Final round. Hippolas has some wind in their sails. Yeah, coming right back into it. Gets another jump and eventually Hippo's gonna have to start catching these anti airs, but calls out the follow-up! Catching you with the crouching light puts you into the corner one more time. We are denying space here in the corner. You can't get out, Jay! Little 6-6M action. We don't have the universal overhead, but we still have the tap on the dome. Icebound, how are you supposed to escape? You got 100 meter and the hard knockdown off of the ultimate flame wall. It's going to be a good start, though. Spot dodge from a Hippolas. 100 meter to your name. Can you kill? I mean, this is going to do a significant amount of damage if it doesn't, but it is indeed going to find the mark. Hippo taking it 2-1 to one to start off the broadcast here. Moving on through that bracket. That was a really good set. I love the adaptation coming out from Hippo. You know his attack is just going to like throw out every barrage under the sun because Ladiva doesn't have too many answers besides like roll or block or jump without like, you know, 
he's spending some meter. Yeah, and like you called out, right, playing super defensive on this game one round start, just trying to get a feel for how aggressive Necrotech is trying to play, right? I think you were mentioning Senpai Spider as well, who I think plays a lot more traditional, a lot slower, and the, uh, you know, on the zoning patterns. I think Necrotech is the more aggressive of the two uh, Materas, right? Not afraid to pull up with a short hop, the 6-6-L, to make sure you're in that corner immediately. I cannot believe we're seeing so many of these options from these players, right? It's where you like hit them with a reset, the combo ends, and you hit them with a raging strike. It does so yeah. much good mileage for you. But, dude, I feel like Uber GC is struggling just to find an answer, and we have 100 meter on the board, too. Yeah, exactly. Are we going to use it for the old skills, or are we going to play super safe, walk our way in so that we have the opportunity for that SSBA? I don't know. You're running out of HP to give. Unfortunate. Thought I was going to be able to not go for an arrow shot. Gets called out by the EX pile driver running right in there. Going to dive right back into this round number two. Necrotech pretty much on fire. And that Larry not going to make purchase. There we go. Finds the roll. Trying to go for the great fall here. But now the only thing you've lost is a great amount of space. Stuck up in the corner. Oh, and you're just barely out of the 50% for that DP. Still mashes out though. I mean, everyone wants to get the opponent into the corner, right? But especially Ladiva. Cheesecake, when you get the, when you get this opponent into the corner, that is like when it's go time. That's like, okay, here's 50-50, bro. It's going to be a strike or a throw. Can you see it? And Gadget Pants with a $50 contribution, giving Uber Cheesecake some energy. Thank you so much for your contribution, bro. Damn, inspired by the 50-50, says I'll put 50 in the pot as well. And now Necotech <laughs> down to 30% HP. All you got is the 100 meter in the bank. Uber, how are we going to try and hold on to this lead? It's scary. No, but jumps right into the super. Air on block will evens up the health lead. Yeah, no, it wasn't close enough to get that animation locked, but yeah. it was still enough to send home a message, get the health lead, like you say, and back them up. And here we go. Saw you catching a button, but it was actually the butterfly, which has very little cooldown right afterwards. So it was able to block just in time. Yeah, I was surprised the recovery was low enough, but yeah, like you're saying, recovers in time. Now it's basically one touch on either side. The ult knockdown off of the arrows. No Uber Cheesecake, you're in chip damage territory. Oops. Dude, it, it is a struggle for Ladiva to get in as long as if she doesn't have meter like that. This is Matera's game to win. It's when the game starts, like we said, when Uber Cheesecake gets meter. That's when it's like, okay, do we send the super like we did right there? The Skybound R from Uber Cheesecake was a good idea. They were waiting for a Twitch from Necotech, whether it was like an attack or whatever, and was hoping it would be Bonero, but it was actually the Butterfly, so we actually didn't even get the hit afterwards. Speaking of, throughout the arrow, EX doesn't find too much, ducks right under the Lariat. Now we get a pickup off of the Raging Strike on hit, didn't even need to go for the chain. Yeah, I was expecting a Brave counter possibly, and so the Raging Strike yeah. comes out, and it's like, okay, accidental surprise, gonna take a little bit of damage in the process, and lose a BP in the pro uh, uh, on top of that. So now Uber Cheesecake putting Echo Tech right back into the corner. We got full meter to play with. Are we spending it, or are we conserving it for the next one? We are conserving it, punishes it with the light, I big, fan of that doing a meaty light makes the cooldown so little that you can just block the sky banner right afterwards yeah exactly go for that save jab knows that necotech is looking at the 100 meter in the bank but spending a hundred of your own it's a round for uber cheesecake yeah good punch that, that almost looked like vanilla of matera for a second you see him doing a reversal uh skybound art <laughs> go, great ball trying to keep uber at bay Dude, just a rough wave on the far heavy, yeah. Just a hair too far away to get that conversion. Okay, brave counter to give you some damage. Gonna go for the reversal ultimate that puts you into a bad, bad spot. Uber Cheesecake finally Ooh. finds the answer using the meter to close the distance, going through the arrows right above. It goes from east coast to west coast. Almost got another conversion on top of it. Not a little bit too far away. Ooh. We call out those jumps. With the scoop, the ultimate anti-air grab, Necotech mentally destroyed, and that's a game on the board here for Uber Cheesecake. I mean, after you get the anti-air grab, right, it's such a stylish way to call you out on any attempt to jump out of the corner. So, you know, it's uh, it's scary. You're like, all right, let me hold down back. Let me not get anti-air grabbed again, but Uber finally tying it up. Yeah, again, Uber, well, the second they get meter, that's when it was go time. We finally found the answer through it. So Professor Necotech still playing the same way right here, using the arrows right just to apply the pressure uber cheesecake being at a very long distance it can't really do anything until we see that 50 meter again yeah exactly 
There we go, just going in for the jump in. That's Brave Counter from Nekotech. And we're we're seeing Nekotech play a little bit more defensive now, right? Instead of going for a short hop or 6XL from the round start, immediately walking back, establishing that mid-range that Uber really has to take a risk to try and contest. And now at this point, we got 100 meters, so we can send it with the Skybound Art. Managed to call them out with a command jump, converts it into a Skybound Art of their own. Professor Nekotech is going to take a good chunk of damage from Uber Cheesecake. And we got, like, corner pressure here, potentially. Calls out the sweep. Yeah, lots of corner carry. This evens out the BP situation as well, so any stray hit from Nekotech should be able to confirm into a kill. But you're fine losing some screen space, right? We were already in the corner, so you have a lot to give. Dude, I think Neko is afraid of pushing a button. Because, because of the meter, the meter is such a big threat. Yeah, you don't want to get caught out in the startup of an ultimate lariat, anything like that. Speaking of the SP, there we go, the SBA rather, all the way from downtown, stuck up against the corner right now. No BP, but finds the 5L. It's set point for Nekotech. Dude, and that's exactly why Nekotech was playing the way they were, right? Just backing up, didn't want to commit to a button, because the second they did this, they committed to a second arrow swing. Uber Cheesecake was at the ready. He caught that 100 meter, and that's when the fight becomes insanely scary. Out of this, guys. 2H. Not a lot of damage here, but you do lose some space off of that jump in. Okay, meter online now for Uber Cheesecake one more time. Gonna give you access to ult Larry to try to close the distance. But speaking of having meter, Nikotech's gonna spend some of their own to get that reversal to get a little bit of off of me. There you go. Roll through the arrow, set the butterfly. Yeah, you're locked down here. Uber still has a decent amount of health, so this chip damage really is not a big issue. Ooh. Uh oh. Yes, sir. There it is. We saw the Sky Vendor come out one more time. It's not the most damage in the world, but sends home a message and puts Neko into the corner, which is a very bad spot. But Neko playing hyper aggressive because they can afford to. Uber Cheesecake's out of meter, so you can just go in there and try to chip them out. Oh, there we go. Off the hard knockdown. Just sets up the zoning so well in the mid screen. Neko Tech does not want to give up any of that pressure to game number one. Yeah, uh, Jehan actually uh, top aided the last TNS, by the way, uh, two weeks ago. So not, Ooh, no okay. stranger to being in the later parts of the bracket. Meanwhile, I got Laidway back over here, who's gotten fourth and fifth, respectfully, at TNS 8 and TNS 9. So they're bo both these players, like this might as well be a top Oof. eight match, but they're in pools. Yeah, exactly. They're not even fighting for top eight right now. They're fighting for top 16 and fighting for their lives right now. You know, of course, six, definitely a character that has a lot of great normals and a lot of ways to, you know, Keep the pressure on, just rotating through the specials. 2B, you know, someone who's really good at controlling that space. Also with the air stalls as well, but especially stuck up in the corner, you're deep. No! You dropped the super! That is, uh, that is rough. Don't have to worry about the bad defense when you drop a crucial combo. To find the escape here for laid way back. Yeah, not only did you drop the sky down, or you're also down 2BP in the process. You used so many of them. Now we're down completely, but hey, not going to be able to get the kill here, I'm pretty sure. Yes, sir. We're going to get right back out of that corner with the reversal, using the ult in the process. Stuck in a very bad spot. I like the patience of Lidway back, but Jay Han was even more patient. Jay Han with that ultimate empty hand makes her way up with the wall cling and takes that first round there. It was scary, right? You're trying to go for the air assault 50 50, but. Sometimes you just gotta respect with that safe jump, and now you're brave countered back into the corner. Yeah, just having the ability to like jump off the wall like that is such a strong tool, especially from like anyone on the screen too. You don't have to be near the corner. It's yeah. such a good tool just to be able to like mix up your opponent. Ooh. Okay. Falls down with the JH. No full confirm. Once again, caught out with the ultimate empty hand. J hand just making full use of that uh that special. Yeah. There it goes. It goes for the EX variety instead. The difference between those is that you gotta like go for the spot dodge on the ult variety. And the EX yeah. you got a challenge. Yeah, it's scary to try and do both, but there we go. Just baits out the EX parry. Aerosol right above with the pod now laid way back. Ah, oh, the scaling's too big, so any light confirmed, Whoa. just do it again, bro. Aerostall to tie up the round. That's one of the strengths from 2B, right? Just being able to dash in, immediately go for a jump overhead. It's a really good mix to be able to, like, throw at your opponent. Speaking of mix, by the way, uh, 2B also has the ability to go for double jumps. The only character in the game that can yep. do it just like that. It allows you to get big punches like that. You can react to your opponent and then go for a second jump. There we go. Jump to the sky's EX projectile. So many plus frames, so we get opened up at the throw. Still a lot of health here on laid way back, so not trying to be too antsy about making your way out of the corner. Jumps right over the empty hand. That was so clean, going right back into the corner one more time. Give me all of that damage. Lidway back, trying to reset something. Gets called out by the tech throw. Gets called out by a raging strike. Unfortunately, you are pushing a button. You are mashing, so you can't do anything about that. 
Oh, Raging Strike. He was pissed once again with the Raging Chain. Jayhan takes game number one. Homie's like, I got the Raging Strike button? What if I send it twice? What if I send it twice? Believe in victory. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if we can put a game on the board twice here. Or if Laid Way Back is, Laid Way Back is looking to tie it up. Just looking for a lot of these air style JHs to control the uh, airspace. But Jayhan, of course, also has a lot of ways to try and be tricky with that momentum. Yeah, 2B's jumping heavy is such a big active hurt box that also hits behind her. Looking like Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. a little bit. It's such a good tool to be able to just like jump across your opponent and cross them up. Ooh, speaking of cross-ups, the way Lady Back just walked. There you go, jump on it and ended up crossing you up as well. I wonder if Lady Way Back walked themselves out of the corner or if that was a setup, you know, intentionally from Jayhan. Either way, one touch, two BP apiece. And right back in, spending the Brave counter. We're just sending that Skybound art because we are sick of you pushing buttons on us, but that's six for you. Going to be able to get the block right afterwards, blocks the Skybound art in the process, and gets this uh, round winning punish. Yeah, SSBA, full punish, brings us to set point here for Jayhan. Again, once again, trying to go over that empty hand, but recovers in time here. And not only that, brings you over to the corner. Here we go, trying to... Figure out this Rekka running right back in with all these close lights. Gets the the reset after the wreck on top of that. A snake bite yep. is so good. Yeah, scary reset into the plus range with Lebe back. Still able to escape the corner off of the dive kick. Doesn't find anything. The immediate jump over is a full punish from Lebe back. Yeah, spending that BP to get that additional damage in the process. Another grab. Here comes a strike throw. Oh, the levitating to mix up where we were going. Catches you with the jumping H to even up the game one more time. Yeah, I'm really liking the pod stall coming out from Laid Way Back, right? I don't know if we've represented a lot of the low option for the jump ins, but if it keeps working, right? No reason to try and swap it up. Now, Jayhan. Oh, right through with the parry. Yeah, a lot of good options coming out from Jayon doing the, like you said, the pod stall one more time. This time in the corner, just to get yeah. that damage climbing further and further. We, Jay, we already got a help and we got the suck in. You're going to take so much. Dude, stuck in the vortex figuratively and oh. literally oh. catches out the attempt to brave counter. Walk back far heavy and laid way back ties it up one a piece with a perfect dude one thing that's really tough against the likes of 2b is the fact that her normals are go pretty far and they yeah. chain into one another without even having to hit the opponent so there are times we saw jayhan both both times trying to go for a brave counter to steal his turn and in the process accidental raging strikes came out twice and both those times took so much damage yeah, you're like, Lady back is swinging, right? So surely on my wake up, I should be able to Brave Counter. But like you're saying, the whiff cancelable normals, especially with the range that they go, it is definitely very deceptive. But Jayhan already taking quite a chunk out of your life bar. Brings you back out to the mid screen for the cross up. Once again, 100 meters to your name. Next hit absolutely kills. Oh man, Wait. putting you okay. right back down on the ground. Okay. Little bit of an early grab to mix it up. Gets the perfect to respond from the previous one. Yeah, perfect for perfect here. It's set point for Jayhan once again. Okay, going for the air stall dive kick, trying to keep yourself all the way over to the other side of the screen. Scared of those whiff cancel normals, but instead off the TP, gets side swapped up against the wall once again for the gravity. The vortex, I got cross ups too. There we go, Lane. Going right back into it on top of it. So much of the damage. Oh no! Gets the old version of it. Puts you right back into a bad spot. Yeah, we spent the meter for it, and we spent the skill gauge as well, so we're really not going to have a lot to fight back with. Stuck up against this corner, though, trying to stall out for that skill gauge to try and make your way back up. Help! Dude, like, asking for a prayer at this point, looking for yep. so much help together. Ooh. Finally, opts to go for the reversal. Another EX version coming up because you're airborne. You can't go for the air dodge right afterwards. We're applying so much pressure. The process literally back needs to get something cooking here. Boom. Finally gets another pod stall into the jumping heavy to even it up again. Another last round. I swear, that's like the seventh air stall that Jahan has been like, surely you <laughs> represent the low option now, right? There's no way that every single time you don't go for the land 2L, but still, last round here. Final game, final round, fighting for their lives. EX Rekka, no opportunity to frame trap, but no challenge there on the reset. Oh, speaking of a challenge, though, we're just going to go for that parry right afterwards. A little bit of a, a, a good stuff here. Another ult coming out just to give you that extra juicy damage. This point, just kind of calling out Jay, uh, Lady Way back from mashing. 
There we go. Double jump. Doesn't even go for the pot slot. Trying to avoid any chance at the anti here. And it's DP. Keep you up against the wall. Barely any resources for late way back though. So Jahan immediately fights back out. Jahan's getting so much mileage out of those options because on top of that, it's only costing him 25 meter every single time he lands it. So he can just spam it just like that. Late way back finally jumps over it. Calling it out. It's like you are getting way too happy with that option. I'm going to get the punish and I'm going to take the set win. Shake my hand, players. But hey, you know what? We got to dive right into the next match because these players were ready to go. There we go. Right on into it. We got Inochi versus Tiempo Gree. We got the Nier versus 2B here, baiting out the DP, but still caught up on the 6XL. It's scary to try and challenge. So if you've been watching any sort of like rising Grand Blue at all in the past like, couple of months, you should be no stranger to this character on the left and Nier. One of yep. the more dominating characters within the current meta. Yes. Didn't really see them get, claim victory over at Arxis World Tour, but was still three of them in the top eight. So this character is strong, and it's for a reason. It's because of this puppet character right here. It's basically just a 2v1 at this point. Because look at all the damage you're getting in the process. Oh my god, the usage of the ultimate no. skills as well. 6-6-M, not able to get a full kill off of it, but baits out the DP, and 6-6-L is all you need. Inochi, I think making a lot of good use of the ultimate skills from uh, from death, right? Either to put you in the corner with 2 and 4 you, or also to try and escape, but Tiempo fights back with a counter hit. Yeah, just the classic standing heavy, gonna be able to call you out with the big combo right afterwards. Some of these combo routes we're going for seems to be like the light version just to try to like air stall them a little bit longer to keep them in the air, get some more damage in the process. And we're finally calling you out with the ult variety just to have to spin to win death. Yeah, tried to go for the ominous turn. Nothing found, but it does let you at least fight back towards the mid screen, trying to put up that close L presence. But instead, all you find is a DP and a decent amount of damage for the side swap too. Woof! Oh my god, we even got the punish on death, and we still got called out by Inoki. Good coverage on that, gonna spend on the Skybounder with only three stocks. That's gonna do so much more damage. Again, the lower that number is, the little heart there, the more your damage your Skybounder is gonna do. Yeah, exactly. Spend all of those skills to try and get dominance over in the mid screen, and once you have lethal, trust me, it's gonna do a ton of damage. First game over to Inochi. I'm seeing in the chat, please, Psy Games, break 2B knees in the patch. Great. You know, there are two characters on the screen, and I was expecting one of them to be more complained about than the other. I'll tell you what, but I love the variety in the chat, and I love the DP. Once again, challenge that pressure. The gaps here from Tiempo are immediately going to get called out. Uh, speaking of calling out, we actually called out that option from Inoki. Being able to block all that calls you from being able to dash in, hits you with the normal. Look at this pressure. I love the backup, but it's still active hitbox. There we go, escapes the slashes, but we do not escape the raid from Uber Cheesecake. Thank you very much for stopping on by the backstep here from Tiempo to try and hold up this spacing, right, where we have these whip cancelable normals that are so scary to try and contest from 2B. Yeah, dude, just being able to just try to call out a 2B from dashing in is so difficult. We're still mashing out, and we have no more health to play with, so now you're going to see Noki have to play super aggressive because 2B has so many tools they can play with to chip kill you. Yeah, exactly. That immediate laser, even in neutral, right? When you're not getting up from the wake up situation, it's so fast, so difficult to try and react to. Looking for that chip damage kill. Tiempo really wants to tie it up here. Okay, good job. Ooh. Get rid of death temporarily. G gonna leave you completely vulnerable in the process. We got clashes, Ooh. but hey, if you're both airport, I'm gonna give it the 2B. Exactly. Take to the skies. There's so much range on these normals, right? And even when you look at that sword slash, you're thinking, oh, maybe that far end really doesn't do uh, too much as far as range goes. But it's also advancing, right? You have to remember she's taking a big step forward, trying to take a step to escape this pressure. But no, instead caught out from the jump in Inochi has you up against the wall. I don't think you're quite able to kill, though. Um, okay, we're not going to spend it on the meter, unfortunately. No. Going to be able to put you back into the corner. We got one stock left. You cannot use death at this point unless it's a Skybound or so you're just going to lose it. We don't even need death. Just going to go for the sweep instead. Yeah, we tried to go for the delayed tracking explosion. I wonder if we did it too early as you know she was falling down, so that's the reason it didn't actually lock them down. You know, locked onto the tech out of the skies. But there we go. Tiempo fights back from the round start. More combos coming out, gets called out by that reversal parry one more time. Again, it's kind of uh, disheartening when you're playing against Nier and you get called out by it. Oh, and the turn around overhead. Not only you have to mix up high low, it's also left right in the process, just built completely into one move. 
go. Tries to take the disguise, but JU brings you back down to Earth. Tiempo, it's scary. Oh, the range on that UDP, definitely something to be admired. You spend the 50 meter and the skill gauge for it, you might as well get the range. 3 VP to your name, but caught out with a 2M. Inochi takes it 2-0. Pop, pops you up into the air, finishes it off. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze. You're gonna move on through that bracket with no problem at all. It, Battle one. This round start could be very promising, right? See, Weezy's probably gonna play aggressive. Just like that, goes in with the dash life. You can't give Lunar the opportunity to get set up. Yeah, but it's scary, right? You're trying to make your way on in, but you get caught out with the far H every single time, even without a full confirm behind it, right? It's just this big stop sign stopping you from uh, trying to approach. Yeah, now we're just teleporting like crazy, mixing up where we're gonna land left and right, abusing all that until Seaweezy starts to catch on. Might as well throw it in the beginning, calls out the jump. Can't get a conversion because it wasn't a counter hit, but still applies pressure with a reversal on top of it. There we go, the UDP on the other side. Teleport not gonna find his mark. Step kick, looking for something. The walk back U dash punch going right over the U, the uh, two U rather. It's the first round over to C Weezy. Okay, I mean, if you can't, if you don't let Cagliostro get set up, that's kind of how I expect the match to go. C Weezy running right back in, sees the teleport, backs off in the process. Now, this is the range that C Weezy is gonna struggle at, right? Because not only was a trap set up, but the Cagliostro pretty much has a semi instant poke from almost full screen. Those spears, dude. They could send you right into, like, Death's Embrace. Yeah, they're terrifying, especially if CWZ tries to, you know, go for the dash up. We don't have the immediate <laughs> walk out of the dash, but we do have the Raging Strike on hit. CWZ probably not ready. He's like, why? Why did you get opened up there? But what's going on? I used Raging Strike. It missed. I'm doing it again. I don't exactly. care. It's going <laughs> to He tried it third time. That was supposed to be a Brave Counter, but that's okay. We're going to come right back yeah. into it. <laughs> Death Punch not going to find the mark. Lunar a little bit too high in the sky to find a full confirm. There we go, JH. Yeah, we're, we're just trading, putting out the hitboxes right now, trying to find this first hit. No catch. He wanted that old seal to apply as much pressure as possible yes. onto the opponent. We're coming right back in. See, we going to take a clean game one. Good golly. Bro, sniped out of the air with a roundhouse kick. See, Weezy. All right. Before we had loaded in, I was thinking, all right. Lunar is going to have an easy time, you know, just playing the keep out game with far H and of course the traps on the ground as well, right? But see Weezy doing a good job staying right outside of the range of these normals. That 6-6L now find a full confirm though. Yeah, even though we got a seal out in the process, you're stuck in the corner. We bait you out with the strike throw. Thought I was going to be spend a, a second BP to get us out of that entire pressure. And now we're taking 20% damage for the rest of the game until a Skybind art comes into play. Yeah, that's unfortunate too. We got the startup of the ultimate skill. So 50 meter down the drain. Lunar using the 50 on his the, uh, UDP with the Golden Throne. Still getting pushed up against the corner here though. Dude, just all of these dashing lights mixing up our approaches in the process. Good mash out coming out from Lunar, but we call you out from that high up into the air with a crouching heavy. See Weezy on set point. Yeah, I think from the first game and even that previous round, right? Seaweezy has been doing a good job of, of letting Lunar kind of take the disguise, running under, and Lunar thinking, oh, okay, now that I've established that I can take the disguise for free, let me go for the jump in. But that big 2H puts Seaweezy on set point now. Lunar immediately going on the aggressive. I would be a liar if I said I didn't think Lunar was going to take this with a 2 0, and Seaweezy is yeah. proving me wrong right now, putting Lunar into the corner one more time. We finally get some momentum here from Lunar. Teleports right behind with the body substitute, comes right back in the seal right above but we got meter for the reversal dashes out of there to reclaim the corner pressure yeah, he tried to go for the throw bait off the extp now lunar at one touch lets the golden throne rock seal right behind you but nothing found the jump punch in is gonna find a 2-0 for c wheezy yeah nochi coming right back up right off of his w with the cagliostro nochi or sorry, with the sorry, the near. Meanwhile, yep. Prada, the classic Cagliostro. You gotta remember, Prada has played so many characters over time: Belial, Normaya, Lucilius, uh, yeah. Six, 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 so many. But lately, has been kind of solidifying on the Cag. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like a lot of these players from the previous versions have have had some time to develop these pocket characters or side characters for certain matchups. But you know, Cagliostro definitely the Prada comfort pick here. 6M brings you back into the pressure with the trap, finds a strike throw. Oh my god. Help. Dude, that, that point blank teleports the giant mix up of right landing left or right. I'm gonna fool you twice. Here we go. Nochi coming in, gonna spin it on the skybound. R with only three stocks. You are exploding from that hit. 
the geyser, especially with such low health. There is, uh, we don't need to send that one over to Willa Kill, is what I'll say. I think we all knew how that one was gonna end up, but Prana, the super jump jump in, finds the first hit. Okay, finding that crouching medium one more time. Gonna go with the side swap using death to apply pressure. Brave counter to relieve it. Teleporting in the center. We're gonna brave counter right back at you because these players are greedy. They want it to be their turn. Ooh, 6XL into the throw off the clash. Smart recognition from Inochi there. Ooh, the death turn actually getting caught out with the rock. Right, ooh, finds a close L. Let's be right back into the blender. So much damage with the Oki right afterwards. Thought it was going to be a brave counter. Let it rock a little bit too soon. So it was an raging strike coming out instead. And Inochi going to take away game one from Prada. Yeah, you're like plus a million there. There's so many blocks on uh, frames, but Prada, unfortunate timing there. Finds the one gap in between. Caught out the raging strike. And there we go. It's game one over to Inochi. Okay, now we're seeing a more aggressive Prada, which we saw uh, last week over at Crossover Park. Prada's a very yeah. aggressive Cagliostro. Maybe that's like the what you got to do against the likes of uh, Nochi's near. Again, one more time going for the auto combo to put you back into the, the, the bad spot, the corner. Yeah, we tried to go for the side swap there off of the tech down, but just a little bit too early, right? So Prada able to find the full punish off of it. Stuck in the corner, meat grinder. It's a quick first round. Yep. I'm going to spend on that Ars Magna to take away that first round. This is exactly what Prada wants to do. Good, far heavy. Going to give you a little decent chunk of damage for your troubles. Has a trap ready to go. And thank you so much to TSB for giving us the raid. My New York City homies over there running a tournament today. That's what I'm saying. The New York homies always making sure to show some love. Thank you very much for stopping on by with a big raid. And now Prada, you know, got some wind in their sails, right? She's like, oh, okay, we got the raid. We got more people watching. Let me show you what I got. Once again, the meat grinder for the easy kill. That's, that was a quick game too, honestly. Yeah, dude, that was... Prada acted like game one didn't even happen. And we're going to go straight back into game three. Let's see. Inochi's you know, got to get up, dust yourself off, and jump into this final game. There you go. Like once again, it really seems like Prada is just running away with it right now. Off of the spin, you know, she's able to get a straight hit, but still stuck out in this mid screen. Swipes on through with the 2U. Doesn't even have to worry about the seal because you have so much range. That was a wonky hit. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if Inochi expected that to actually hit because Prada went in a weird direction and Inochi couldn't get that normal follow-up right afterwards. There's the mix-up. We run up to bait up a grab. We jump instead with the EX spare body, which does have an active hitbox. It easily just packs you out. It's going to send you right back into the grinder, and now you're stuck in a bad spot. There we go, the air rock. Yeah, you really don't have to commit too hard here. There we go. We just down back, waiting out the DP. Now Prada on set point. After that first game, she's really just been running away with the momentum. Yeah, dude, that was a sick option select. I'm not going to lie. Prada like, runs in there off of the uh, spare body and was able to get yep. the punish on the reversal. Here we go. Death grips. Finally able to find the damage we saw in that first game. Inochi bringing it back here. It's out the Brave counter, but it's still plus six. Off the 6-6M, nothing found. Yeah, you know, we're going to go for that little uh, leapfrog action because of the trap, which puts you into there. But speaking of traps, you just activated my trap card. Here's a reversal, sending you into another final round for the set. There we go. Both of these players fighting for their lives in this final round, trying to make it to the winner's side. Top eight, but the two eight, just a little bit too low on the hit to actually get a confirm off of it. Stuck between the seals, but we find the spike. Yep, jumping right back in with the EX spare body, using the traps to extend the combo and extend how far you're getting pushed back to stage. Stage control completely in Prada's saying, but now Ooh. we got the wall coming up from Anochi. There's the close heavy, and that's going to be the game. Prada ending that set in a pretty dominant finale. Paragon line last night using yeah. Siegfried. Yeah, so he's definitely been tearing it up, putting in the hours, but Killbens, you know, putting a few more hours in the secondary, right? We feel like a lot of us know Killbens for the Lancelot here, but pulling up with the six reads, still able to make a winner side top eight, still able to escape the pressure with that MDP. But now we have ourselves another kind of unorthodox matchup here. We'll see Weezy using the Sauras to just kind of rush down the Siegfried Menace, running with a dash light. The thing is that Sauras has that's really good is being able to just continue block string pressure, and the opponent really can't do much out of it. There we go. UDP escaped the pressure on the wake up there. Immediately see Weezy letting it rock, knocking on the doors with the 6XL to be blocked. No! I thought he had the block. I, I legit thought it was. So two, I wonder what happened. Maybe going for three, see Weezy feeling a little bit bold there, but the 100 meter spend immediately evens up that health lead and more from Killabans. The step kick, didn't believe. 
Didn't want to believe in the pressure, and now we're getting block string to death. We're just going to send the DP because you were at chip kill anyways. The only way you could have beaten that at that point was a spot dodge. Yeah, exactly, and that's a big read all the way on the layer three for round number one over to kill events. Heading on through with the EX Rekka. Yeah, opting to go for the parry variant that time around, calling out Seaweezy's uh, challenge. And another grab to get you some more Okies. Two times a turn. Do we see a third? Nah, we're going for the strike this time. Brave counter to relieve that pressure. A dash light to come in to add some damage. But Gilvin's playing very aggressive. Opting to go for the reversal to steal that turn back. But Seaweezy responding in kind. Yeah, let the EXDP rock. Inspired Seaweezy, right? Immediately lets the UDP into the cross through. Now it's corner situation. Off this next hit, Seaweezy also builds the 100. Got a BP behind it. Oh! That was too far away. You saw him go for the reversal one more time from Soros, but because Kilvins was far away and was leaning back with the Raging Strike, which, by the way, has a massive amount of range, was able to get a punish on C. Weezy for it. Man, spacing out with the Raging Strike to preemptively call out a DP is so smart. We even saw that, you know, last week at Crossover, right? Saw that from Artorias as well. So maybe feeling a little bit of inspiration here. Kilvins takes that first game. Definitely watching crossover arc out here to get some more knowledge. Dashing in, getting the block strength. Finds himself with enough range because there's one thing that Swords can kind of struggle with with his normals is the range. I wouldn't say they're stubby, but they're not as far range as, say, Siegfried. So he has to commit to, like, a skill to close that distance. Yeah, exactly. See, we see definitely playing the aggressor in this matchup, right? Kilvens has such long normals off the sword, but SBA does not find the mark. See, we see with a full counter hit confirmed back out to the mid screen here. You've got to run up to try and get this pressure back. Now it doesn't even need to go for it. We're just blocking. We're just holding it. Uh, See Weezy was hoping that Kilvins was going to try to play aggressive to steal the turn because he was so low health. At that point, if he managed to land a reversal, it would have killed. So that's what Sea Weezy was kind of banking on. Double backdash. Caught out with the, you know, you were able to block the firewall, but this is exactly what Killvins wants, right? Push you up until the corner. Now it's set point once again. We go for the double damage buff. We're trying to trying to seal this out as fast as possible. EX firewall, nothing found. Yeah, eating some health in the process to power yourself up. Gonna do so Ooh. much damage. Can call it, but you were too far away or too close. I don't know. You just jumped above it. Weird interaction. And you lost all of your meter and your momentum in the process. And your meter is about to run out for the attack up. And it is gone. That is one of the few rare times we've seen the SBA from Siegfried not find the mark. But now it's chip damage rains. You tried to go for the spot dodge, expecting the faster fireball. But EX Flame Wall seals it out and sends C Weezy down to the loser side. We see a little bit more action from later on, but we got to jump right back into this one. Prada on the CAG. Lead way back on the 2B. Let's get it. Lead way back immediately going for that back walk. Just saying, all right, Prada, try and play a little bit more aggressive here. I have two B normals here to catch you out of any type of approach. Goes for the spare body one more time. EX variety gives you enough mileage to put down the trap. Uh, that was a very brave grab. We dashed through that and we actually grabbed to negate the damage from the trap because when you're standing on the trap, it doesn't activate right away. There's a little bit of a delay, so you can use the invincibility from grab to avoid the hit. Yeah, in Rising, there's a little bit more of a delay on the uh, the trap detonation there, but that was still bold, right? Going hard committing to the command dash to try and look for that grab. Got you a decent amount of health, but now Prada brings us back out to the mid-screen. Spare body, TP right on over, and we get the full confirm of the trap. That's where I can give you that extendo combo going up with the gold Ooh. trap. I was trying to go for a brave counter, but good gaps being left behind for Prada to be able to get that win. One to finish it off with the grab, applying some more pressures with the spears, but now it's Lady Back's turn. And we're not going to find the answer. We tried to do, we saw this option from really back so often in the last set, and Prada was definitely watching. That's what I'm saying. We punched right on through with the 2 H. You know, Prada definitely saw that set with Jayhan and said, no, no, no. I'm not going to let that be me. I'm not letting Pod stall JM, uh, you know, tear me up. So immediately just looking for it. There we go. EX Beyblade for the wall bounce, too. If there is a character that can actually challenge to be in the air, it's got to be Kakuyoshi, right? Just having the ability to teleport or spare body your way all yeah. over the place when you're, they're also airborne and we're seeing all this damage just because of that air to air Oost. wheel of time the perfect coming out from prada here okay game number one the narrator said it better than i ever could do perfect game number one prada in dominant control so you lay back and try to mix this up a little bit start off really strong but prada just all you need to do is get those setups going and prada is so good at finding the perfect moments Oof. to start setting down those traps Yo, TP to go right over the laser, that was scary, right? I actually thought Prada was gonna get tagged 
on the way over, but not as active as you might like. Go with the uh, 5M. Did 2P just dash over the trap? Like, because she's so fast? Bro, she's got that mar She's got that Olympic sprinter energy. Do, do it again? Liquid Mac is just saying, all right, are you going to try and tag me on the approach or are you just going to let me run up for the throw? Not a lot of health loss for Prada, though, so really, it's a lot of risk for, uh, you know, medium rolling. Yeah, good awareness to have the back, recognizing that you can actually get away with stuff like that. Putting in that seal, this is the reversal of the old variety. Does the AirPod stall, gets the jumping H in the process, and a big combo coming up. We're even going to spend some BP in the process to make it a little bit longer. Bates out the reversal. That should have been the game win, but was a little bit too high with that jumping heavy. Oh, the uh, Beyblade under after the tech. I actually thought that was going to side swap, and I'm sure laid way back. Thought something similar caught out the Raging Strike on hit. There we go. UDP puts you just outside of chip range. Later back has had enough. We are reversing like crazy out here, spending meter after meter to relieve that pressure. That rock, that puny little rock, I'm going to laser that with Pod B, bro. Get out of my face. There we go. Set up the double traps. Oh, the... Oh! What? The air to air to end the ages? That that puts us into battle to... Oh, air that's to a, air, a... hit for hit, the double KO coming out here, looking for the even match, but I don't know, now that puts Prada on set point, jumps right back over with the side swap. That's always scary when you only get a two round game because of a double KO to come out. Very yeah. rare sighting in the process, but laid way back, gonna get called out by Prada's jump, that trap right on top of you. This is like the worst spot to be in, you have to jump together. And we managed to find the jumping heavy backwards from so far away. Ooh, okay, there we go. Reset off of the baseball swing. That was scary, though, right? We were trying to swing with the 2M. Apparently for 2B, that does not actually hit low enough to clear the traps, but we do hit high enough to tap you on the dome. The pod stall coming out here, but it's still not enough to kill. Oh, oh my god. We're going for a brave counter to put you in the chip kill. We send out the beam, and you're done for a double KO working in Lidway Back's favor. Taking away the first round because of that. In victory. The tracking Battle laser one. beam, the uh, the robot crown was so scary, right? Because in a previous set, we saw them activate it a little too early off of the jump and actually lose the tracking projectile, right? But just waiting until the end, looking for that chip damage checkmate. Now it's final game. Far heavy again and again, trying to bait out an optional push. There it is again, that dash in grab to get through that pesky trap. You know, she wants you to go airborne, but Laywayback's having none of that. Oof. Go plus off the grappling hood. Looks for the 2L Prada. Worse for wear on the HP for sure. Looks for the pod stall. Brave counter not gonna find anything there. The stall just waits it out. And now it's set point for Laid. Laid has so much momentum and is trying to carry this into the victory. But if there's anyone that can stop this momentum, it's gonna be Prada. She's shown so much dominance in the past, but keeps getting clipped by these normals. Extending the combo stops off the pressure. I love that dash around. Did a little bit of mental stacking, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Cross through. Yeah, we have the guard button, but how many times are you looking to actually use it? The cross up really just running away with the momentum, and now we get picked up with the second trap, too. <gasps> no I way. We air stalled right above the UDP. It has so much range, but Prada, so smart to look out for it. And yeah, just dropping the throw on top of you. Thought it was going to be a swing. Tried to go for the brave counter. Going to get called out in the process. Louis Beck is out of BP, by the way. But you know, if you have no health, it's whatever. You can just send a golden throw, and you're going to go for a normal good night ra final round. Tried to stay right out of range, but like you're saying, we're tied up fighting for this winner's finals opportunity. Plus frames off the grappling hook. You get the counter hit though. There's some more combos coming out. A lot of these little dash lights coming in until we finally call out the mash. Goes for the crouching medium to call it out. And now so much health being depleted from Prada's side. We go for the air stall to be able to get the jump heavy. Increase that damage. One more swing and literally back and take this. Go. Any leg confirmed does it. Not seeing a lot of Antias from Prada. Scared. Now you're gonna go for the jump in, but there we go. The UDP, the Vortex from Laid Way Back seals it out 2 1 to move on to winner's finals. A real smooth. Let's see it. This is the scary part of top eight, man. This is when it's do or die. You lose, you're done. You don't want to be out of the bracket just yet. It's your first appearance in top eight on loser's side. You don't want to give it up. And right out the gate, Char Char Smooth gonna get that install. There you go, tries to run up for something, but immediately the 2U from Inochi. Oh, okay, I like this up up to the ultimate Scarlet Oath, right? So that's a low into a high to a follow-up that keeps you uh, stuck in the corner, but obviously the follow-up does not trigger on whiff. Still stuck up in the corner here with the install Vera.
Oh my god, we did the empty hop. Clashes, goes for the far medium to apply some pressure. And now we're just going for the chip at this point. Inochi had to dash in. There was no other way. Big charge our fans in the chat. Definitely moving smooth right now. Takes that first round. Feels like Inochi was able to find a few straight hits on the defense, but definitely stuck up against the corner. Not sure exactly what to do against Char Char. Yeah, meanwhile, Char Char getting some slick combo routes in the process. Puts Inochi right back into the bad spot here. Can't back against the wall. Another grab. We're going to opt to try to go for the command grab. No. A lot of Viras like to do it. And, hey, you know, if you got the meter, might as well just spend on that. You don't even need it. There's the perfect. There's the win. And that's the game. Bro, off the loop. Mini era, empty jump off of the super jump to El Cot. That, that was that was a quick first game. I'll tell you what. It, it's not Grand Blue unless we see some first uh, quick first games, man. We see it all the time. Oh, did, I thought for sure Char Char was gonna get a confirm off of Lumeria. That was insane. Yeah. Nice counter hit 6XL. Six six let's you get that 2M link. Goes with a 5U. Oh, okay. So we're catching out the attempts of the Brave counter there from Inochi. So that's our way to get into the install against the wall, BC to keep pressure. Finally finds a swing, is able to see Death's first appearance this game to apply the, you know, the wall side swap. Put your back against the wall one more time, catches your toes, gonna be able to convert this into some big damage. We're gonna spend the next PP. We don't even need it because we're just crapping out damage this, but that was so much. Yeah, spend all the BP. You might as well if you know what's gonna kill. And now we've already made our way to set point. Another dashing lie, applying the pressure. Brave counter to take your turn right back. And now again, has this corner pressure, the stage control, throwing out the Lumeria. Now what's scary with the Lumeria is that we're seeing this a lot from Char Char, is whenever it's out, you can sneak in the command grab because it kind of disguises her animation. Yeah, I feel like we haven't seen a single DP coming out from Minochi, just so scared on the pressure to try and fight your way back on out. But there we go. Death turn, goes for the strike throw. Oh my god, Raging Strike from that far away. Char Char is going to spend the last BP remaining just to take back the pressure because we don't even need it. We get another grab and you are done for. Char Char, real smooth. Looking real smooth in that set. That was so fast. But it is Saturday evening. Once again for loser side, top eight. Vermeer versus Lunar for game number one. And Vermeer starting off just a little bit defensively. Lunar's going to capitalize on that. Again, this whole game plan for Lunar is going to be able to set these traps and let Vermeer get hit by them, right? Because a lot of the tools that Sigfrey wants to go for are grounded, right? He has to get in there. He has to do, like, you know, dash light. He has to do any of his, like, double slash follow uh, direct the follow ups. But, like, if yeah. the traps are down, you don't even get a chance to play. Lunar's just going to blow you up. Dude, the traps are down, the chips are down. Vermeer just barely out of chip range, but does find the EX flame wall to go for that SSBA that's gonna. Oh! Oh, we didn't get the animation. That, yeah, that is rough, right? You're trying to look for that big swing of momentum, but no animation loses out on some damage and especially does not drain the BP. It's kind of crazy that Siegfried has like the best Skybound art in the game and also the worst Skybound art in the game. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, right? It's, uh, you know, the SSBA is a little questionable sometimes. I'll tell you what, but for the strength of the SBA, especially in a matchup where the projectiles and the traps can definitely be so uh, suffocating, I think you'll take it, right? Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. And we're going to be able to take some of the health away to be able to power ourselves up for the two stocks worth of power here. Lunar going to be able to put you right back into a bad spot. Trap right on top of you. You can't move without committing to a jump or a crouching light to delete the trap. So you're just kind of waiting for the block. Finds the opportunity to go for the super jump to escape it. But Lunar's going to be able to catch you. Goes for the braving, uh, raging strike to be able to yep. just uh, you know apply some pressure. But didn't have enough meter to get the raging chain. This time, though, we're able to solidify it. Yeah, beautiful pickup there for game number one. I actually thought that was going to be a little bit too low to pick up. I, I was looking at the ground bounce there, but Lunar, lean with it, takes that first round, and also going to be able to double backdash right on out of the EX bomb. And dude, the EX bonk right at the start. What a way to be able to try to call out your opponent. But we got spare body coming out. Teleports right behind Viermir. Able to apply some pressure. Calls out that you weren't going to commit to the, the parry right afterwards. There we go, UDP. It actually launches you into the trap too. Oh, that is... I feel like that's not a setup that we see super often, right? But definitely a nice little pickup from Lunar. Forces Vermeer to, you know, spend a lot of resources to try and escape the corner. Now stuck on the trap once again. Lunar also has a rock ready to play with, but at this point it doesn't even matter because you're probably gonna die from this combo because we have so much BP to play with. Spending all your diamonds to get that kill. Lunar now on set point. Yeah, when you know you have lethal like that, especially with all the BP, you might as well keep it easy with the close HBP loops. 
Uh, you know, don't go too crazy, especially over here in the loser side top eight. You don't want to risk anything to a drop, but still, even on hit, the EX Flame while rapidly approaching your position. What was actually cool about those spear usage coming out from Lunar is that, like, the rock goes in front of her whenever she commits to the spear, and that deletes the projectile coming her way. So it's just very smart gameplay, good usage of that rock. It's already, like, at pretty much max level. This is going to be a really hard thing to deal with, unless Viver doesn't even give Lunar the opportunity. Getting the crouching heavy counter hit, going to spend the BP to get that raging chain to increase that damage even further. Now we're just one hit away from finally putting a point on the board. Viver desperate to find an answer, but the brave counter comes out instead from Lunar. And and now we have max level rock. Here it comes. That takes five hits. That goes right through your EX puny projectile. No, but the funny part is it went through the flame wall and Vermeer said, all right, let me just do it again. I got the rock off the screen. There we go. So scary for Lunar. Any stray confirmed? He's going to be able to tie up the round count here. Playing a lot more aggressive. Looks for the throw bait. Nothing found. But even the air to air isn't enough to kill just yet. Oh no, but Lunar gets the stray far, I think that was far heavy, got the yeah. Raging Chain right afterwards and takes out the set. Viermir actually got some momentum there at the very end, but it was a little bit too late in the final round when he got 3-0'd beforehand in, in terms of rounds. And guaranteeing himself a top five finish here in this TNS, facing off against Charge Hards, Vera. See how going to go, they both just start off with the dash light, classic Grand Blue. All right, we, we understand how this match is going to go, right? Immediately swinging for the fences, jumps right over the 5U, says Char Char, you are not getting away with that one. Yeah, like, there was like no setup on that either. Like Char Char, I think that was like a test from Char Char. like, will you fall yeah. for this? And now that's knowledge for the rest of the set. Yeah, exactly. Would you jump over the command grab for 10,000 USD? There you go. Cross right on through, jump back over to make sure we have the corner, but see Weezy immediately with the fight back, whiffs the up kick, but it's all good. King saw the EX coming out, opts to go for the reversal instead a lot. Seaweezy likes to go for these side swaps a lot. Did it commit to a button? Actually, it was the reversal instead. Never mind. And gets called out for the punish. Thought it was going to be anything but the Skybound. I was expecting like a far-reaching normal. Yeah, maybe if we were just a little bit closer, that would have gone into Seaweezy's favor, right? Invul through the invul, but uh, just because you were right out of range, you get the full super punish. Oh. Seaweezy not happy about that one. So trying to play a little more aggressive in round two. You always hate to see a counter hit anti-air oh, on a crouching yeah. heavy just drop <laughs> right afterwards. A little bit too low, but that's okay. Seaweed's not showing himself phased by it. Instead, going for the wall carry, and now we're at 1 BP left. Gonna take that additional 20% damage in the process. Can easily turn this into a skybound arc to give yourself that install. Ops did not save it. Instead, goes for the command grab, and now you have meter with install, which is even scarier. Yeah, we're, we're getting very greedy from Charge right here, right? Instead, going for the 5U, which Seaweezy might have been able to challenge. Tries to go for the Space Out Raging Strike, but there we go. The Raging Chain seals out game number one for Charge Out. Didn't even need the full meter. Just opted to spend a 50 on the Raging Chain to close out that yep. first game. Seaweezy was putting up a fight, though. Ooh, tries to go for the 6XL once again, but Seaweezy just one layer ahead. Send out the Flurry of Blows. Gets a first hit, but, you know, it's an awkward confirm. Yeah. Ooh. Awkward trade, awkward tech grabs, and then we finally get a throw to be able to put ourselves in a little bit. And now, Seaweezy just trying to get these uh, reversals way a little, a little bit too soon. And Tartar just getting a punish, putting himself into a free install, and again, has 100 meter to play with while in install. Yeah, off of these block DPs, I'm not seeing a punish come up, uh, you know, on Charger's hide, so I feel like CVZ at least might be able to jump out of it, but, you know, why are you thinking that off of the uh, block DP, right? You're assuming your opponent is going to go for the full damage punish, but Charger are really valuing this install and off of the up kick at set point. Yeah, Silversault kick uses the air dashes to glow in there to get the combo confirmed afterwards. Char Char looking real smooth here in this final game. Hopefully he can try to close this out, but CVZ struggling to find a point. Ooh, there we go, caught up with the 6XM, it's a full confirm with Luminiera as well, off of the wall bounce, this is so much damage off of the low. Okay, Raging Chain, gonna give you a lot of damage in the process, extending it all the way optimal, looking for the next answer, that's gonna be able to hit, but you're too far away to get a confirm off of it, which is like a saving grace for Seaweezy. Really caught the toes. Speaking of, caught out with the 2U in install state. It's more than enough to kill. Char Char real smooth makes his way over to loser semis 2-0. But again, big shout out to Seaweezy making it to top eight. And not only that, number five. We saw uh, the, the, the Siegfried very recently. All right, the Siegfried coming out from Prada here. I mean, late in the chat saying Prada's been messing with the Siegfried a little bit. And we saw, you know, to bring it back again, crossover arc last week, we saw Artorias 
taking over Wavy, so maybe they can, maybe there's a little bit of faith in this matchup, at least in this version. But heading into game number one, Prada trying to go for the counter pick. Yeah, like maybe, maybe that, that, that that dude was cooking over there in that brag. I'm gonna yeah, give this a shot. Okay, coming in with the 6-6-L, a lot of block strings coming out. Lunar not giving it up. Okay, good punish from Brada. Oh, sorry, Lunar. Can we able to just like spot dot, sorry, dash right through that and get a punish into the corner. I'm still thinking about that Sig 2H hitting on the other side. We saw the cross up from Lunar, but now stuck up against the wall once again with the full counter hit. Tied up on the HP, but knocked up into the air seal. No confirm. Oh, we're gonna get a big confirm off of that. That's probably gonna be dead. That's so much damage off of the counter. We're not even, we don't even get the animation, bro. You're dead. Don't even need the animation. Run through the sword. Prada takes the first round, but definitely still neck and neck. Back and forth here on that last hit. Another far reaching heavy pushes you back. Uh, slightly sees the trap, goes right through the spears. EX top body. I love the patience coming out from Prada. Again, we haven't seen too many players punish jumping EX spare body, but if someone's going to do it, it's going to be a Kag main. Prada is doing such a good job of leveraging the Seek tools, right? Run up 2L to clear out the seal, run up with the 6-6M, six, six and then caught out of the spare body with the immediate 2H. Knows exactly what to look for against her own character and leveraging Sig's tools to do it. Caught out with the 6-6L, six, six no confirm. Yeah, this is scary, spending a second BP now just to try to steal that turn back. Jumps on you with a golden throw, gives you the perfect opportunity to go for the seal. Thought you could try to brave counter right through it, but unfortunately the seal activated a little bit too early. Catches you jumping with the gigantic looking projectile. Lunar is completely out of BP. Has to be able to get something going. Oh, See no. the projectile coming. We're sending the nuke on him. Earth that way. You tried to go for the flame wall, but the Earthbenders came out to play. The SSBA from Lunar ties it up. That was that was a clutch super. I'm not gonna lie to you. Looking for the blue flash. Yeah, exactly. just waiting for that one singular swing and finds the mark with a punish. And now we're evening up the score here for game one. Yeah, in that first round, we were seeing a lot of good spot dodges from Prada. A lot of good, very decisive challenges on anything that Lunar's trying to represent. Now we're seeing it kind of go to the layer two, counter to the counter play, knock on the door with the whiff CL. But instead, it's the throw. you locked down once again in the corner. The giant Unga swing coming into clutch, but Lunar gets the hit. Gonna be able to get the side swap in order to extend the combo off of the trap seal. Sees the dive get coming now. I'm just gonna go for the lunge. Gets the grab right afterwards. Go run up. Oh, just a little bit too late for the save jab. So UDP brings you back out to the mid screen. Okay, Brave counters right back as a, a response. Has a spot dodge ready to go this time. Prado was getting a little bit overzealous with the Unga swing. He's going to pay the ultimate price by losing the game. The ultimate price with the EX Beyblade to seal it out. We were looking so dominant for Prada, but Lunar just needed one or two rounds to adapt to the playstyle. Says, all right, you know the character, but how well do you know Sig to be able to keep me locked down on the defense? I don't know. Another teleport coming out. Brave counter to push you right back. The far heavy stopping your dash in its tracks. Just goes for the massager. The, the messenger EX DP puts you right back off of you. Big punish out of here. Wasn't a counter hit though. Ooh, there we go. Tries to go for the frame trap. Just ducks right on under it. Lunar finds the 5L Raging Strike. This is going to be huge. We have two traps in the process. Doesn't even use the second one. Opsy just go for the push right afterwards. No! A dropped combo. That's going to pay the ultimate price. Prada's going to take advantage of this. Tries to go for the Raging Strike, but Lunar's not even dropping a sweat. No momentum was dropped from that. He just went for, uh, she went for the spot dodge immediately. No momentum loss, but definitely, uh, you know, sweating off of these combo drops here. That was an awkward interaction, I think, with the trap into 5L. Maybe stuck in the tumble state, so wasn't able to get the Raging Strike. But either way, set point for Lunar. Spare body gets you that, that corner situation here with the full pickup. Oh my god, it extends further and beyond. Barada just putting off a slobber knocker of a combo route. We're going to get the side swap right afterwards. Yes, sir. Ooh. UDP for the anti-air says no air stall to worry about. And there we go, the trap to seal it out. It's Lunar with the 2-0 to move on to loser's semis. Counter pick be damned, but still. Facing off against the 2B winners, finals. There we go, first three actions. Starting off pretty slow, right? The back dash from Kill Event, the double jump from Laid. Just trying to, you know, feel out. Okay, how is the pace of this match gonna go? Okay, that's exactly how it's gonna go. You jumped up there? Okay, bet. I have a DP. A lot of characters 
like to go for a crouching heavy against the likes of 2B, but like the thing is he's got a double jump and an air pod stall, so there's so many options for her to be, be able to bait that out, but you just go for the reversal, you go in the air, you match her, dude. Ooh. Yeah, counter hit 2M, nothing found because Lade was not ready for the hit there. Hopefully, oh, are ready for the ultimate fireball. Just trading the 50 meter back and forth. Air stall, nothing found. Kilvin has been watching the stream, says, no, no, no. You are not going to get the air pod stall on me. Kilvin's desperate to get that first TNS win underneath his belt. But Ladeway back's also looking for that same exact title going in with this, these combos. Puts you into the wall. A lot of damage here. Only one BP left. And now Kilvin's is completely out of bravery points. Going to be able to take 20% more damage in the process. There we go. Run up off of the plus reins. The throw puts you in a pretty scary situation. It's not quite chip damage just yet, but oh my god, barely any BP on either side. Pulls up for the crown of thorns. That's the laser to seal out round number one. Here we go. Game number two, or round number two. Kilvin's coming up, is down one round. This is going to look really good for the late way back. Or in the block string, waiting for the opportunity. There we go. Getting some swings. There we go with the linebacker tackle back out to the mid screen. Tapped on the dome, but it's a little too high for a full confirm. Either way, laid way back, keeping the approach on the parry, too. Stopping the dash in with these crouching lights. Tries to call it out one more time. Kilvin's just getting a lot of mileage out of these swings, but unfortunately, Ladeway back's gonna get called out by the Skybound Art. SBA coming in clutch, giving me all that damage. Well recovers quick, but not quick enough. Caught out on the toes. There we go. Ducks the follow up on the Orkin, but still. Okay. Ooh. Not able to get a uh, air unblockable off that firewall. You just you come back to the ground so fast. But taken to the skies once again. Knock on the door with a close L. Okay, another skybound R. We are out of bravery points here on Kilvin's side. This could potentially kill because of the 50% additional damage. And it does it. Okay, not that strong raw, but that's okay. We clean it up really easy with a run-up grab. Gilvins. Now, it looks like we figured out what was going to be happening there. Again, this is going to be Lidway back with the uh, set lead, taking away that first game as we jump into game number two. A nice little safe jump there off of the JM. Goes right on through the MDP, but mid-screen not going to get too much here. Oh, gets the rebuy off of the dash. All right, increasing that damage bit by bit. So much here in the corner. Kilvin struggling to try to get out that corner. Runs up, baiting out a throw. Opts to go for a light instead. Try to get a potential counter hit in the process, but the reversal going to be able to just eat you alive and steal back that turn. Ooh, there you go. Once again, tapped on the dome. That's going to be a big conversion here with the Raging Strike. Do we spend two? No, I think we know it's not going to kill, so we hold on to as much BP as we can. Oh, yeah, 100%. And now we got 100 meter here on Kilvin's. This could be very bad. Manages to catch the cross up, the falling jump heavy behind. Going to be able to get that hit confirm a uh, chugging. There we go, the double backflip. Oh my god, just let the MDP rock. Says, no, no, no. You're trying to be a little too evasive with the movement. Eat the boot off of the 6XL. Kilvins makes his way in. Another light follow up. And we see this a lot coming out from Siegfried. He's like to go for like the double scoop, you know, the, the, the mid combo. Because it also has the active hitbox. That crouching heavy, no follow up afterwards. Dropping all of that damage down on the table. Ladyway Pig's going to be able to steal that momentum. Go. So much corner carry off of it too. Tries to run up to bait out a DP, but nothing found. Kilvins with the delay. SBA puts Ladeway back in throw range. Okay, another messenger of reversal coming out. Ladeway back literally at blink of a health. Has to be scared because Kilvins has three BP to play with. So he can easily try to just go for the brave counter. Opts to do so to push you in the chip kill range. Runs up. That's pretty much a checkmate situation, dog. A projectile coming your way. Run up in a, in a DP. Get to spot dodge at like just the right time. It's a very tricky window. Exactly. To try and avoid that, maybe you could have just jumped back or, you know, walked back. But then, you know, in that situation, you're giving up so much space there. Lane way back. Didn't realize, you know, you could just run up for that chip damage checkmate. But there we go. Tied up one round apiece. Caught up on the other side. So we swap up. Bro, Kilvins is letting these reversals rip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, dude, you're in the air. Get off of the sky. This is a no-fly zone. Speaking of no-fly zone, gonna get that spot dodge in the process because you were up there too. No, I'm putting you right back into the corner. Yep, dodge right through. 100 meter down from Kilvens. Tries to bring you back down to earth with the EX flame wall. But once again, right, we have that double jump. We have the pod stall to avoid it and avoid being brought back down. 
Okay, just gonna Ooh. respect it. Doesn't want to try to steal their turn. Slowing down the pace. 6-6-L six, six, gonna come in clutch here. And we don't have any meter to spend with. And we're out of BP in the process. We're gonna take a lot of damage in the process. Flashes galore, but just off the Let that DP rip one more time. No more health on the way back. Just goes for the Unga swing. The bonk coming in. And Killven's gonna be able to take game two off of the clashes. I, was that a throw whiff that we saw from Laneway back? Maybe just a little bit too far at that spacing, but I like the idea to try and go for one of your fastest options, but now Killvent trying to bring it to another game as fast as possible. There we go, back throw. Yeah, speaking of fast as possible, that was a way too fast of a grab. You're gonna get punished in the process. Laneway back getting some wall combos here. There is the setup. This is gonna extend the combo even further, and we're gonna end it up with a Skybound art. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to live through this. Yeah, it doesn't do that much damage. Mods, shoot this guy with lasers. Mods, bring it back with the SSBA. This one is not going to win by any means. Remember, the homies who got you here over to winner's finals, and we tie up the health lead handily. Showing a little bit of a sneak peek of a vein in that shot as Layway back, uh -huh. coming back in. Block string has to brave counter to get rid of the block string from that fireball. Maybe you thought Kilvin was going to dash in, but regardless, Kilvin's going to sneak that round a win away. Yeah, I like the use of the EX Bonk there. It has a lot of vertical range to try and go through any of these air cell attempts. Catch out the jump from laid way back, but still, we're fighting on through, trying to bait out an anti-air, but instead, EX Flame Ball is all we get. Avoids the 2H, but does not avoid the EX DP. See a lot of lights. Tried to end the auto combo with the overhead, but laid back was on the scout for it. Another reversal coming out, the e ultimate variety. And now we're just throwing out the hammer, the mallets. We have the skill gauge ready to rock. Have to wait for that to recharge. The longer Kilvin's waits, the more that meter's gonna be able to charge for late. Yep. Ooh, there we go. Caught up with the EX flame wall. I mean, obviously, when you're that far away, not able to get a full confirm, but look at how much screen space we've lost. Tumbles back into the corner. And tries to get out using a diamond in the process. Stuffs out that dash with a close light. We got meter, we got corner optimal combos to come out. That black thing is gonna do so much damage. You are done for. Dude, that super just keeps on going. I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna be close. Oh, but it doesn't care. Oh wow, we still haven't gotten to the final swing kill vent. All right, two, one. Just needs one more to move on to that grand finals. Winner's side lets the Orkin rock, but nothing found off the parry. Has to go for the reversal. Saw Ladyway back was trying to go airborne, which is like the 2B's happy spot space, right? They want to be in the air. Ooh, there we go. Not going to lose the clash this time. Ladyway back just letting the auto combo rock. Nothing found off the hammer, though. Just waiting a little bit for the skill gauge to come back up. Uh oh, Black Fang going to go right above that swing. Gets the big damage, was too far away, so we're not gonna get that, that animation to get even more damage in the process, but it was enough to relieve some of that pressure. Yeah, we whipped the EX Bonk there, which I think is, you know, a shout out to the spacing, right? Killvan's trying to stay right out of range of these whip cancelable normals from late way back that just have so much range in the mid range, or in the mid screen rather, but still, sometimes you're a little bit too far out, able to dodge the swing entirely. Late way back, not a lot of help. You know it's gonna be a little frustrating for Laid, right? To try to get the momentum shift. Anytime you see them getting like any sort of block strings or you get them knocked down, a reversal's coming your way. Speaking of reversal, there it is. You jumped into the air and he's the Black Fang to close out the set. Kilvin solidifying himself in gr almost grand finals. One round to win away from being able to get it. He is on the track for that path. It's a reversal, it's an anti-air, it's an acrobatic skill check, and now we're checking if Laneway back has anything left at home. You're one round away from being sent down into the loser's side, but once again, let the reversals rock. And Massager coming out, tried to go for the overhead swing of the auto combo, Laneway back hyper aware of what was happening, opted to go for the standing block to get rid of it, that projectile catches the toes as well. Laneway back's defense has been really impeccable on these little neutral games. Once again, end it in the EX Orkin. Walk up on the flame wall. First time we've seen UDP in quite some time from late way back. Oh my god, he can't keep getting away with this! Help me, dude. EX Bomb, we're just gonna slash on through. Once again, that 5M gets you so much range for a relatively quick button as well. Okay, a little bit too far away to try to get an anti-air in that process. Relieves the pressure with a reversal, spending that 50 meter just to get that little bit of my turn action. But look at these EX swings coming out. We spent all the cooldowns and finally closes out the set. Kilvent, Grand Finals. His path is finally secure. He is guaranteed top two, his highest placing at a TNS, and he knows he's looking for the gold. Got yeah, Char Char real smooth, facing off against Lunar. Char Char with the Vera, uh, Lunar on the catch.
Yeah, and Looter, no stranger to these top fours, right? But seeing Vera in the top four side as well, let's see if you're able to keep the pressure on. Little swipe out there from the spare body, but a lot of these hits really not getting you too much. Charger kind of demonstrating that we already have those quick reaction times out the gate. We saw the spare body, we saw the teleport in the air. We managed to go for the quick swing just to try to like stuff you out in the process. And now Lunar taking a lot of damage off of that BP spin. We're gonna also get the extendo off of the meter. Puts us into install, but that's okay. We're gonna take a little bit of damage in the process. There we go, caught up on the trap. Little close L, but oh, we fight back out. Here we go, Char Char takes that first round. Yes, sir. Looking very strong. A very dominant start. Okay, slash on through. Oh, that's space duo right outside of the range of the far H. Go gets the run up for the grab. Set up Luminiera. Not going to commit to the command grab just yet. Wants to see the reactions here first. Holding back on that one, but is able to just side swap it really fast. But speaking Ooh. of side swap, we're going to send it right back towards you on the trap. There's my Uno reverse card. Right into the double seal. The Aquatic Mammal is coming up huge in this matchup right now, but so is the install. Set up Luminiera once again. Tries to beat out a Brave Counter. Avoids the DP, but still needs one more hit. Try trying to commit to that super jump. Oh, that was going to be a Brave Counter, but we are just jumping right above you in the process of seal. Stopping. That was such a good option to get rid of the seal. That wasn't even in on my radar. Just goes for the flip kick to delete the seal. Air dash right afterwards and gets out of the corner. Bro, I thought we were going to see the immediate back out to the lobby, but no, the rematch was so quick. Lunar, not happy about that one. Char Char really just keeping up, keeping up the pressure, the momentum, and representing a lot of these creative movement tools that you get in the install state to avoid those traps. So game number two. Bates out the grab, but can't get a punish. He's a little bit too far away. All right. Blade Blades at the trap between you. That was a really good jump coming out from her. The trap kind of helped protect her upon yeah. landing. And we're just going to let that go on the, as like a reaction. And now we've got access to air dashes. We got access to more, bigger projectiles. And now we got access to a out of BP. This could be huge. All we need is one more hit to be able to get this off. But Lunar not going to be able to give it up. Goes to the spot dodge to get the second swing on the reversal. Lunar hyper aware of the matchup. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those like week one knowledge checks that you run into. You're like, oh, why can't I punish the Vera DP in the install state? But definitely Lunar, someone who's been playing this game for years, right? That layer one is not going to catch them out. But you are going to get caught up with Spear into Trap. Look at all the screen space we've taken off it, too. Yeah, this is where Lunar wants to be, right? That full screen option to be able to get those pokes from that far away using the spears, the calculations. And now we're getting a lot more damage off of the anti-air. Puts you right back into it, using the medium version to push your point closer towards you. And the Raging Strike had to spend our BP to get that pressure off of you, but it was at what cost? spent the BP, you spent the meter to look for the ultimate Scarlet Oath, but the immediate poke out from Lunar says, no, I am not holding the low high. I am not holding your approach at the mid screen. I'm immediately catching you out with the air to air to tie it up 1-1. One, one. Taking a little bit of a second here to get that rematch button, right? How to re uh, recompose yourself. You had a very strong game one if you're charge Char. And so game, game two kind of like fell off the wheels a little bit. So we'll see if we can try to like bring this back or if Lunar's just gonna clean up shop. Yeah, I think it's funny that like game one to game two, they were like, no, 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 let me back in. Game two to game three, they're like, all right, you know, this next one is for our tournament lives right now, fighting for that loser's final spot. So the trap right behind you, Charger in the install state says, no, 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 I'm moving on past. Yeah, well, you know when we get into that top three spot, get placed in the money, at least for now, you know, that match, you know, could get to the top four frame. Go jump on through, Raging Strike, doesn't find the mark here, caught up on the other side. Meter for Char Char, but how are we gonna try and use it? 2H gets caught out with the Golden Throne. A very bad spot to be in. Just opts to go for the command dash, closes the pressure, big punish, and dying for that reversal. Char Char is back in the game now on set point. Battle two. Engage. Right, super jump over, caught out with the 5H. Yeah, sometimes the 2H, the uh the lack of horizontal range can make it a scary attempt at anti-air from Vera, right? So I like the spacing from Char Char, just to make sure you get that 5 age goes right under the spare body. Oh, stuffing out from the crouching lights, get the knockdown, another spear to get the timing down just right, keeping you at a distance, but the cooldown off of the command dash was so fast that you're able to respond to the jumping tag right in front of you. Go, 
BC on hand me, set up the Lumini era, but we go super jump, spare body, ult seal. No, we're, we do not want to interact with the silly, funny, uh, you know, spirit. That was actually incredible spacing from Lunar on top of that, right? Was putting the spear just in front of Char Char, so it, you know, Char Char moved forward, was gonna get caught by it, and it's like a semi-instant poke. It's really strong to be able to have that. Catching the feet, catching you move backwards slightly, mixing up with the jump, one more grab can get the next hit, looking for it. Brave counter steals the turn right back, teleports right into it. Big punish, right back at you. Bet it all on the UDP, but Lunar looking for the SSBA. It's tied up one game apiece, one round, the final round here to see who makes it to losers finals. Seals are back down to the ground. Spears, right? I tell you, this is the great spot. That's why Char Char actually backs up a little bit because Lunar doesn't want the full speed. He wants the semi full speed, but now we have installed for the rest of the set. At this much health off the command dash, this is going to be huge for Char Char. Here we go, run up on it. Tried to challenge after the Scarlet Oath, but maybe just a little bit off on the timing. Now Lunar taking a lot of damage stuck up against the corner. That's what to be in. Blocks the Brave counter. Still loses the turn, but is not going to be able to lose the pressure. Gets the trap, spears of the EX variety, of the ult variety. Gets the grab of the trap, gonna get the combo afterwards. Spends the BP, has the meter. Not gonna be able to spin it on the skybound. Ooh. Art catches you, going for the grab. Runs up, gets the jump. EX spare body to get the hitbox. And that's gonna be the set for Lunar. Back in ready with the 2B again. Uh, we got Kegliostro coming out from Lunar. And jump into the three BPs a piece. Now, in this game, we've seen this before today. It's pretty much gonna play very similar. I mean, Lunar and Prada are very different tags. Lunar likes to play a little bit more uh, passive until we find that hit and then the, puts the pedal to the metal, you know, wants to get right in there and apply the damage. But way, way back, I might not be able to give him the opportunity. Ooh, there we go, the seal right behind you. Nice, I like the pickup off the far edge into the spear. Make sure that you get the full confirm into that air trap, or the Beyblade, rather. Okay. And just like we saw in the previous set, you know Lade's just gonna run right through that trap, get the grab, and use the invisibility from the grab to be able to deactivate it. But Luna playing very strong, putting Leiway back at very little health. Okay. Yeah, the is nothing found. But we are in chip kill range. That's definitely something that could happen. Brave, Brave counter to get the pressure off. Does it again. We have the air, got both answers. Double spot dodge. Gonna activate the uh, the parry in the process and take away that win from Lunar. So spot dodge to parry is insane work. Laid way back, able to bring it back in the clutch. Maybe there's a more optimal punish. Maybe there's something a little bit crazier. But hey, if parry is gonna kill, that's all you need. First round to Laid here as Lunar tries to tie it back up. Does the dash in again right over that seal. Fastest dashes in the game. When she gets going, dude, she's just like your Automata, bro. Like, she'd be running through those fields. Mm -hmm. Not the dome with the 5L. Nothing found. It's jump out to escape the corner here. Lunar already down to 50%, so really trying to look for any way to even up this health. Double jump. Caught out with the air to air and a pickup on the way back down. Lunar, lead with it. Yeah, a lot of damage. Also, just a simple jumping light air to air conversion, but way back able to just kind of mix up what we're going for. Didn't have enough meter to get a confirm off of the Raging Strike. You know they were thinking about trying to go for a Raging Chain. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You were stuck at 24 out of 25, and off of that dropped combo, Lunar is able to tie up the rounds. Yeah, real heartbreaker. Now as we switch over to nighttime, as we get later on into the bracket, Far H to try to catch out a whiff punish, potentially gets a very sneaky jumping light once again. I'm not even sure what side that hit on. God, stays on the same side with the TP though. Spare body. No, we're going for the main house here. There we go. Ties up the health lead. Finds another hit. Ultimate beam for the full pickup in the corner. And that chain keeps going higher and higher back into the corner, holding that block string forever until we play patient and wait for the opportunity to find the mark. Finds a jump, goes for the EX spare body, turns the tables on late. Can't get the wall bounce. Was desperate for it to extend that combo. At the seal. Again, tossed up. Throw range. But we are grabbing. Finish. And we are DPing, escaping the 50 50 off the air stall. Says, no, no, no. If you're going to wait up in the skies, Golden Throne is all you'll find. And game number one over to Lunar. Yeah, looking very strong right now in this set. Runs it right back into the match two rematch from both players coming right into this. Remember, this is a race to three, so they still got plenty of games that download the knowledge on the opposing player. 
Ooh, there we go. Spot dodge through the grappling hook. You do not want to have to hold those plus frames. Might have even put you in the trap, but instead we run right over it. You know, like it was said in the chat earlier, right? I think it takes like 12 frames to activate, but especially when you're marathon running that fast, no way it's going to catch you on the way over. Oh, my fault. Yeah, it's okay. You know, these things happen. You get, <laughs> you get, you get hit in the corner, you get comboed. It's just it's the end of your day. Oh my God, called you out, jumping in and a counter hit in the process. Going to get the extendo combo on top of it. Spot thought. Oh my God, stays right out of range of the Golden Throne. Says, no, 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 no pickup off the J2B. Oh my God, help me. Help. No help is coming. The ambulance is not on the way. It's cost too much, but hey, maybe... No, it is not going to be able to live off of that good exchange. Close to light to seal the deal. Lunar now on game point one more time. Yeah, I like that the lay there from Lunar. Saw that late still had BP available for the Brave Counter. So just waiting it out, baiting it out into a raging strike. But okay, let's see if we can tie it back up. Knocked up against the wall with the baseball swing. Gravity. All the, off of that from a jumping heavy. Try to keep that pressure at going. We're going to relieve a little bit by spending a diamond. Okay, here we go. Whenever you see those traps on the ground, you know Lunar's going to be on the lookout for either a jumping uh, EX teleport or a grab or like a, a, a 6-6-M, something to push you into the trap. So scary. You got the strike throw. You got UDP to put Lunar into throw range, but all the meter in the world, you might as well let the Golden Throne rock. That close heavy block string, we're just because it's such an active hitbox, we can do the Brave Counter for free, and we're going to get that win for free, evening up the score one more time. There we go, back to the nighttime once again, tied up on the rounds. Blade really wants to tie up the set score right now, but Looter finds a spike. Finds a spike, and now has a rock on top of that, finding it on the mark, which is really good. What's good about the rock is it kind of like compounds with her other skills, right? If she's putting down a trap or a spear, the rock goes in front of her to catch out like any sort of like opposing approach. So yeah. easily come into the mark here, but obviously just going for the reversal to steal back that turn. Whoa! Catches out the double jump again, the strayest, the wackiest of jumble, uh, jump lights. Yeah, unfortunately, jumbles up to confirm at the end there. Not able to get the sick combo like we saw earlier, but we are able to get the spare body right up against the wall. Meat Grinder seals out a second game for Lunar. That EX teleport is getting away with murder at this point. Lunar does such a good job of dashing towards her opponent. It's like, it's going to be a grab. It's going to be a grab, especially if there are seals on the ground because so many people are looking out for grabs if there are seals because of the grab combos, right? But it could easily just be a jump teleport instead, or even just a jump reversal if you want to go for it, the, the old variety. Exactly. The strike though becomes so much scarier when you have the threat of the full confirm with the seals as well, but landing right into the plus frames off the grappling hook, the stare down for a hot second, but finds the hit off of 5N. Okay, just jumping back to try to create some distance here until we try to find her right back in. Hits Lunar, gonna be able to delete the trap in the process and gets a wall combo for your troubles. Baseball swing Whoa! once again, four takes for the cross up. It's the tiniest amount that it brings you back out of the corner, but it's able to find another hit. Putting Lunar just barely out of throw range, but the strike, you cannot escape. Blade is so sneaky with those jumping H's. I am telling you, coming right back into this next round, you may be down 2-0, but you still have that momentum, and you still have the fire to get that win. There we go, counter hit far H, finds the mark here. Trying to snipe you out with the spear. If one doesn't work, we'll do two. <laughs> the double dash, a little, little bit of a fox trot for your troubles. Jumping yeah. over the, the seal, gets called out by the spears, kind of locking you into the block string. Had that ready to go. This is exactly the space that Lunar wants. This is perfect for Lunar. You're at that mid range, you can easily get called out by the spears, puts you back into the trap. Getting a lot of these far H's, no confirms, but it's just stopping you in your tracks. That's gotta be frustrating. Yeah, and I mean, we have full range options from late way back in the laser, in the grappling hook as well, but definitely something that you can react to if you're Lunar. But there we go, off the hit, the raging chain puts him on set point. Now looking very strong to try to get that run back over in grand finals. Try to get that win. Needs that one more round, but late way back still got a lot of oil in that tank. Ooh. Got a lot of jumps in the engine as well, just barely avoiding the anti-air. Light little tap on the dome with the laser. Now we get a pick up off the 5M2. Run up on it, still caught up with the UDP. Oh, the perfect grab puts you into the thing. Can't get the combo extender. Instead, we're just kind of walking the space ourselves to get the, the uh, Oki instead. Yep, ooh. Yeah, you laser beam for the extender once again, stuck up against the wall. That's scary. Any hit from Lunar brings it back, Perry. 
Nice. Looking for that next answer, trying to catch the feet from the back down. Lunar is spending one of the BPs in a reversal fashion. We are out of health. And Living Effect has all three BPs and Woo! chip kill is on the table, but it doesn't even matter. We're going to catch the landing with a simple standing light and finally puts a point on the board. Living back, putting this up to 3-1 or 2-1. Now, I imagine laid way back when that laser did not chip kill was like, wait, 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 uh, what's going on here? Still uh, able to operate it. Oh, <laughs> still able to operate in the clutch. Throws out the plus projectile once again. Really wants to hold on to this momentum going into game number four. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just try to be in that hot seat for as long as possible. Gets the reversal off of that whiff grab right back at you. No reversal gonna go for it one more time we're back to here but those traps are right above you and gonna be able to get the Ooh. reversal to get the combo extension yeah that's unfortunate you blocked that you waited out the grab you blocked out the beyblade but still there was the udp to pick up into the trap and this jump over off against the wall once again lunar brings it back to set point ending it with the ex alexandria to bring this back to a potential victory literally on the cusp of it Oh, finds the clash off of the air to air, but Laid not quite sure what to do in the moment. Lunar finds a straight hit. We're chilling with these rocks and we're leveling up in the process, throwing out the spears. The higher level that gets, the more active it becomes, the more hitboxes it takes to delete it. But we get a standing heavy counter hit from downtown. Not too big of a conversion, but at least we get stage pressure. Ooh, nice. I like the far L, just a little poke out to call out any air pod stall shenanigans. Yeah, you gotta keep it honest with the safe jumps here. Wow, try to bait out a grab, but because you're in the middle of backstepping, the Raging Strike gets you the confirmed hit. You don't even get the opportunity to Brave Counter out of that nonsense. We jump up, we get the aerial hit. Does it one more time for the audience in the back. The jump up EX Fair Body to bait out the Strike Throw game one more time. We really, really want that first place. There you go, looking to make history. Killbans already with his greatest placing on the Siegfried as well. Lunar, no stranger to the Cagliostro coming in from the loser side. We got game number one, just trading projectile after projectile over here in the mid screen. Yeah, again, that mid screen, the perfect spot for Cagliostro to be in, but Kilvin's walking with the Siegfried instead of the Lancelot just here in the, like, the final moments of this patch to see what we can do with this character. And it's been doing pretty well, right? You're sitting in the winner's side of Grand Finals. There we go, the full super jump. Nothing found off of the close L, so Kilvin's just fights right back. Oh man, that projectile is so slow moving that if you do an early spot dodge, you still get called out by it. Yeah, still stuck in the corner, right? So it's so active. I think in the mid screen, honestly, that timing might have been fine, but you know, still had a couple takes to go straight up into the super. Lunar in throw range. Sometimes I gotta hold my breath at that because I was like, there's no way oh, Lunar's dead, right? Like, there's no way. But unfortunately, Ooh. that one did not get the animation right afterwards, leaving a lot of damage to be, you know, desired. <laughs> We go in with the Unga and the Bunga. The immediate bonk on the dome. It's not an overhead, but it is a great opportunity to catch out any of these jump attempts, which of course Lunar is trying to do to escape the corner, to air stall, catch out any of these anti-airs, but Gilvin taking the offensive, taking the preemptive backdashes to avoid the throw as well. Yeah, definitely has a lot of momentum on his shoulders. If there's one thing that Kilovins is getting a lot of mileage out of the Siegfried, it's got to be that EX projectile. Every single time he throws it out, you see him dashing right behind it and gets a hit on Lunar, trying to block it or spot dodge it. We catch you mashing buttons, and that's going to be game one going over to Kilovins' side. Right, that first round was definitely a little bit more back and forth, but as, as soon as we head into round number two, Kilvens was making all the right guesses. Now we're heading to the game number two. Let's see if Lunar can stop the bleeding. Siegfried is such a scary character when he gets the heat under his uh, under his boots, right? When he gets the aggression, he finally finds his answer. Like, oh my god, we call it the teleport, getting that close light, gonna convert it into a raging strike in the process to get some more damage and the corner carry. Ooh, Dude. yeah, once again, trying to go for the early spot dodge, but the EX is so active. If you're not perfect on the timing, especially in the corner where it lingers, lingers a little bit longer, it's scary, but we're able to get the spare body out of the corner. Once again, TP for the side swap. Did, did Lunar spot dodge the first swing of that and then got called out by the second? Is that what happened? That's what I'm wondering, right? You know, still a little bit too active. Catches you on the other side. Another round for Kilvens here. With the 6-6L, but we went for 2U anyway, and it caught the attempt at a whip punish. 
Here we got Rock here ready to go and two traps to play with. That's going to add on a lot of damage and a lot of knockback in the process. Oh, using teleport to get through the reversal. Getting creative out here. Lunar doing a teleport in the process. He gets pulled out by the grab. Spot dodge to get away from the raging strike. There we go. Set the seal right in between you. Nothing found off of it. Off the walk back. The sword of Damocles. I mean, it's spaced out so oddly, right? Not able to get anything off of it. Still. Gets a little bit of screen space off the flame wall. Mr. is coming on another dash attack. I don't think that was a confirm, so we're just going to be able to block on that. Not going to be able to get the kill a little bit too far away. We're going to put you in the chip kill range. Ooh. Tries to spot dodge yeah. through it, but the bigger the rock, the slower it moves and the harder it is. It's like a taste of your own medicine. You know, that EX fireball, I'm, I'm sick of that, bro. Exactly, right? You know, we're turning the tables here, tying it up in game number two, but the Rekka brings you back to the corner. Holding the block for a little bit too long. Gets called out by the Grub. Baits out the Brave counter or anything for that matter and gets a punish. Going to be able to convert that. Go for the route to give you the two level ups and you are dead. Good. You're done. Goodbye. Sayonara. Hello and goodbye. The EX Orkin puts another game on the board here for Kilvin. And Lunar is taking a second in the rematch screen saying, all right, this could be the start of the reverse sweep. Or it could be my last match over here in TNS number 11. How are we going to stop the game plan here? Kilvin's is running away with a lot of these rounds. It's it's difficult to deal with, right? And you also got the, like the mental stacks on top of that, not only in the game, but just like, man, I got to win three games in a row and then win three additional games to take this tournament. Like that's such a tall order, especially against Kilvin's, who has been playing on fire today. The door with close L, just walk back, avoids the far H with the perfect spacing and runs up. Really trying to bait out the DPs behind this flame wall, but finally finds a parry. Yeah, hasn't been looking on the lookout for them. Gets the punish on the reversal because of the two-hit process of Black Fang. Good lord, Lunar is struggle busting right now in the corner. Hell, bro, run up behind the flame wall once again. Tries to go for a hard read. You just barely have a little bit more health outside of the chip damage range. So EXDP right in Luna's face. A crucial miscalculation. A misread puts it on one touch for both sides. The SSBA available. No! Another reversal coming out from Kilvins. The original one, I'm pretty sure Kilvins thought it was a chip kill because I thought for a second, yeah. but... That was not it, but that's okay. Kilvins is still able to close out that round. He's looking for the one more to take home TNS 11. Here we go off the sweep. Ultimate Fireball really trying to bait out the reversals. We don't even have the 50 meter just yet, but trying to outspace in case we go for that spare body, that TP out of the corner. Trying to go for the dash and the catch your toes. Lunar trying to find these far heavies, right? We call out Kilvins from trying to go for the approaches. We're going to spend on that braving, the raging strike. Feel like close a lot of damage. Kilvins just needs one more hit, one more opportunity to take home this tournament. Woo! That's unfortunate. The raging strike just a little bit too far to pick up off of the combo there. All right, trap right behind. Trying to look yes, at that back throw, put you into the full confirm, but instead we run up 6-6-L back over to the other side. Lunar fighting for his life right now in SSBA range. She really wants to get that grab because the seal is on the ground. Has no help. Ops to go for the Black Fang. We block those and we get a punish. Sending a super skybound art. It's all looking up. Cagliostro. No cutscene coming in. So you're not going to leave a lot of damage on the table. Hey, both players have all three BP by mind you. So the second they get in, we're going to see a lot of brave counters probably. Never mind. We jump in. We get the hit. And Lunar finally puts a point here in the round. But we're still at tournament point. So no brave counters, but a very brave jump out, right? You know, we've seen Lunar get knocked back down to the earth with the EX Bonk, but Kilvens spent it a little bit too early, a little bit too far out, still on set point here as we try and push Lunar back over to the corner. Okay, that's time we finally get the timing down on the projectile. Ops to go for the spot dodge, tries to roll in through whatever the follow-up was going to be, but we, had, we ended up going for the quick route. So now Kilvens again, keeping this corner locked down and appreciated. Gets a teleport, not going to be able to find the hit, but gets the side swap, which is very important. Another Black Fang comes out, finds the mark. There we go. This is scary. You still have full BP for all the Brave counters. No damage multiplier, but it's finally the pickup into the flame wall. Deletes the Lunar Virus. Killvens is your winner of TNS number 11.